It's High Noon with David. He's gone and fallen in love with Jesus and bringing boldness to the body of Christ. Here's David. Hi. Welcome to High Noon with David. This is show number 313. Here to bring you a gift. Gift of boldness. Boldness for what? Boldness to believe. Talking to two of you. Those of you that are about to believe and those of you that already are believers and you're hungry for more. I'm sharing basically on the spirit of boldness. To act on this word. First of all, to act on it and receive this living God that sent His Son. You know, my, my granddaughter asked me in the car today, she says, 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 said, Bud, does God love this person? She started just naming some bad people and different things. I said, yes, He does. And she was like, really? I said, He gave His Son for everybody. Not everybody receives Him. That's the reason I'm here sharing the good news. You say, well, we've heard it, we've heard it, we've heard it. We'll act on it. I, I, I get a little, you know, amused at people that are saved that know me. And they get around and say, they say, Nadub or David or whatever they call me. They say, I'm already saved. You don't need to talk to me. And I'm like, well, I, you know, well, at least pay attention and learn how to reach somebody else. Don't be selfish. Don't just be be in it for yourself and you got saved you're not concerned about these other people that aren't saved the gospel's good news share the good news <laughs> Proverbs 28 1 says the wicked flee when no one pursues them but the righteous are bold as a lion and I'm telling you uh, uh, man for me to think about going and sharing and being public that's the last thing I wanted to do I went to Kenneth E. Hagin School in 1981 to 83, and they made me, I was required to preach, and I said, uh-uh, I don't want to be a preacher, I don't want to, I just want to go back to Mississippi and live in the swamp and have a garden and eat off a of wild game and vegetables and cornbread made with bacon grease and do, do a little carpentry work and lead somebody to the Lord every now and then. That was my goal. I thought if I could lead one person to the Lord, that I could die and go to heaven. That would be a tremendous accomplishment. There would have been a lot of people saved over the years. I, I don't get into numbers because I prayed with people that somebody else has already prayed with. So, you know, you don't really know for sure. Uh, you know, they say there's more Baptists than there are people. <laughs> and that's really about the truth. But I tell you, I'm here for that to help you for that spirit of boldness to get all over you see i i stayed in the woods and the lord i but i messed up getting by myself and getting still yet to be still and quiet to be a hunter and i learned how to be a pretty good hunter I, when i'm riding down the road i'm looking at you know i've learned you don't look for a deer you look for uh, something to move in in the bushes it could be an ear could be a foot could be a tail could be the the body uh, flinching to make a a, a, a fly or a, or a horse fly get off of them. I mean, there's just little things you learn, little little tidbits that you learn, little tips. And uh, but just being still, I talk to God so much, and I, I really don't even refer to Him as God personally. He's my dad. He's my best friend. In the Gospel of John, He says, "I don't call you servants." I call you my intimate friends. And that's just the way it is. He's, he's my best friend. And I talk to him a lot. I've had people say, well, you, 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 one, you know, you, you just ain't right. Blah, and this, you, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, I just spent the morning with the Lord and he ain't said anything about it. But he shut up so fast. Uh, the, the thing that'll help you spend time with him. Well, I don't know how. Yeah, you do. Start talking to him. Tell him what's going on. Share your heart with him. Tell him the good, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Open up. That's the reason God created Adam, so he'd have somebody to talk to. 
wonderful. And even after Adam messed up, the Lord comes and says, Where are you, buddy? He said, I'm hiding. I'm naked. I'm hiding from you. And the Lord said, Well, who told you you're naked? He sure didn't tell him. Wow. He, he still was coming to hang out with him anyway. Even though he'd messed up. That's who he is. He's love. God is love. And he loves you just like you is right now. Here we go. I'm going to read to you. I didn't even get started last week. And I was in uh, two, 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 Matthew chapter 9. I'll get there in just a minute. Here we are. And we started in verse 35. So good. Matthew 9, 35, my favorite chapter. One of my favorites. It's all good. Jesus walked throughout the region with the joyful message. He wasn't walking around saying, you're going to hell, you sorry outfit. He wasn't doing that. He walked throughout the region with the joyful message of God's kingdom realm. He taught in their meeting houses. And wherever he went, he demonstrated God's power. That's our business as ministers. Now, I ain't saying this to make me look like something, but I know a lot of ministers watch this show. I <laughs> had a guy come up to me on the walking track at the gym and said, Well, my priest's been watching your show. I said, well, well, how you know that? He said, he, he said, because I watched your show Saturday. And, and then, and then he got up Sunday morning and repeated exactly what you said on your show. And he's Episcopalian. I just said, great. You know, I got a heart for Episcopalians. I got a heart for Catholics, Jews, black, white, fat, skinny, Asian, uh, Hispanic, everything, all mixed up. You may be three different kinds at one. Got a heart for that, but I have a heart for ministers especially. Oh, I've met some of the most wonderful Catholic priests in my day that spoke in tongues and healed the sick. Tremendous, 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 tremendous. Yeah, you got, you got bad ones, you got bad apples in every basket. Oh boy, I said a mouthful in. So Jesus, wherever he went, he demonstrated God's power. So ministers, start laying hands on people and commanding them to be healed. Command them to be delivered. Commanded, command the, the evil to leave them in Jesus' name. Use the name. Have faith in the name and use the name. Oh, you don't have to be wild about it. You don't have to dance around and go, ah, ah, ah. I started out, I was pretty quiet about it. People say, you don't have to get loud. The Lord, the Lord ain't deaf, yeah, and he ain't nervous either. There's times he tells me to get loud. But that's our business. Listen, I like, I, I, I'm open to the music. I love wonderful worship music and praise music. I love, I'm a worshiper. If I'm there, I'm probably going to end up on the front row and I'm going to be dancing and twirling and jumping up and down and shouting and crying and laughing. I just, man, I just, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I'm strong because of the joy of the Lord in me. <laughs> he demonstrated God's power by healing every kind of disease and illness. When he saw the vast crowds of people, Jesus' heart was deeply moved with compassion because they seemed weary and helpless, like wandering sheep without a shepherd. He turned to his disciples and said, The harvest is huge and ripe. But there are not enough harvesters to bring it all in. As you go, plead with the owner of the harvest to thrust out many more reapers to harvest his grain. He, he, he wouldn't leave me alone. That's because some folks are praying for me. Johnny Edwards, formerly Johnny Yarbrough from Pickens, we talked last night for about 30 minutes. First time we talked in like 20, 30 years. I don't know how long it's been. 86 years old. I said, well, Johnny, it's your fault. 
you and Carolyn and May Virginia and others, y'all got around the kitchen table every afternoon, every afternoon, every afternoon, and prayed in that strange language, other unknown tongues, and you scared the hell out of me. And here I am, because y'all prayed me into this thing. And we laughed, and, and I just I just told her how much I appreciated her. And uh, and, and the Lord was dealing with me, because they were opening the door through prayer. Oh, he dealt with me and dealt with me and dealt with me. I had long hair and mustache and dipped two cans of snuff every day and parted. I didn't go just to drink socially. I got drunk. People... I've had all kind of people take me home, push me through the window late at night. Because good thing I was skinny. They would, they, the most guys would throw me over the shoulder and throw me in the vehicle and take me home. Thank God for the grace of God. Woo, that, His grace has been multiplied to me. All right. I'm going to flip over to Luke 18. And uh, Luke is right before you get to John. And here we are, Luke 18, 1. One day Jesus taught the apostles to keep praying and never stop or lose hope. Um, King Jimmy, King James says, Men ought always to pray and faint not. The original amplified, amplified version says, Men ought always to pray and not faint lose hope or turn coward and I want to encourage you I don't care how defeated you may think you are how worthless you may think you are there's an enemy that goes at you 24 hours a day the reason I advocate a disciplined prayer life and I, I, I'm contrary wise. I do things uh, differently just to help me. I, I start praying at 427 every morning, Monday through Sunday. I've been doing it for years now. I started off, I set a goal. I was going to pray 10 minutes a day, and I pray hours every day. And the reason I picked 427 because that's one of my favorite engines. When we used to race a little bit back in the day, don't you ever do that. A lot of stories I tell, don't you ever do that. <laughs> I need to put a little thing across the top here. And uh, But my first alarm goes off at, at, now if it's one, two days a week, it goes off at 3.50. Because I had to get rolling a little earlier. But it usually goes off at 4 and then one at 4.10. That's my first shotgun with a 4.10 and then the 4.27. And... Uh, and then, and then I, you know, and I've gotten, then we pray from 1130 to one. Sometimes we stop 20 minutes to one. Sometimes we pray past one o'clock. That's Monday through Friday. I got a lady that's in her 89th year. She wanted to go to heaven so bad. Now she's so healthy. The doctors tell her she's the healthiest 89 year old woman they've ever seen. And she, and she's enjoying life. She'll tell you because she's praying. So we got her to pray. She prays every day. And uh, prayer edifies you. It'll run depression away from you. It'll run despair out of your life. Oh, I've, I've been in non-prayer, and I've been in prayer. Prayer's better. Hope you listen to me. It doesn't mean that you pray every waking moment. I'll, look, I sit down and eat me a lunch, fix me something. i got a stack of DVDs that high. And I'll watch me a cowboy movie. I can watch a good cowboy movie in 17 minutes, two-hour movie in 17 minutes. I just fast forward to the parts I really like. And uh, I believe in relaxing your mind. I, I went to see a movie, a three-hour movie the other day. A new cowboy movie came out. It was awesome. Well, did it have cuss words in it? Well, last time I went to Walmart, I heard several cuss words. Am I going to quit going to Walmart? It was an awesome cowboy movie. Oh, it's great. Just it's on at the movies right now. It's so good. I just I believe in going and doing stuff for your mind. Relax your mind. You are a spirit. You have a mind, will, and emotions, and you live in a body. You need to relax your body. You need to rest your body. But I have a disciplined prayer life every day because it's so easy for the enemy to steal that from you. People say, well, I pray all during the day. Liar, liar, pants on fire. 
You ain't done it. I know people say that. Now, now there are some that say that I'd believe it about them. Because you can see the results of it. If you do a lot of praying, you're going to be full of joy. You ain't going to cuss near as much. <laughs> oh, I get people. People get so upset with me because I won't act like they think the way they think a preacher is supposed to act. And I, I, and I ain't gonna get, I ain't gonna start being normal today. I'm normal to Father God, but I'm not to this world. Alright, here we go. I'm gonna read again. Jesus taught the apostles to keep praying and never stop or lose hope. Not, or to never faint or turn coward. Um, You know, the word says that you have not because you ask not. And you have not because you ask amiss. Or you're praying wrong. Charles Capps, he told uh, he told the Lord, well, I this and I that and it ain't do. And he said, I've been a praying, Lord. And the Lord said, no, you ain't praying, you complaining. <laughs> You know, the best way to talk to the Lord is talk His Word back to Him. I, I tell you what, it it, it, I, it it took me years to read in the book of Colossians in the first chapter, couple of three chapters. And I saw in there where God sees David Emmett Dixon as holy, flawless, and restored. I'm like, in no way. <laughs> I have thought, well, I have thought, just don't, just don't let them stop and build a nest and hatch eggs out. And thoughts not spoken out die unborn. Just don't, don't stay there. I have, man, I used to be so wrapped up in my head. And, uh, and I used to let people live in my head rent free. Kept me thinking about all the horrible things and bad things happened to me. You know what? I've learned to think on what I want, not what I don't want. I've learned to say what I want, what I desire, and not what I don't want. The guy asked one time, he said, do you really want all those things you've been saying to come to pass? I went, Aah! and came to a screeching halt. I said, no, I really don't. But one thing I learned. You don't have to let everybody know what you believe in for. Don't, in fact, don't tell most people. Because they're just going to throw doubt and unbelief at it. Your own family may be the worst ones about it. My mother my mother used to tell me, she didn't mean it. She didn't know what she was doing. She was talking out of her head, not out of her spirit. She said, David, you don't, don't ever finish anything. <laughs> well, that is not true. <laughs> but I tell you what, and she said, you ain't never going to mount be worth a, you know, you know the word. And I believe that because that's all I heard, all I heard, all I heard. And we go to church and she, you better straighten up and fly right. And I'm thinking, well, how? Y'all ain't doing it. How do I straighten up and fly right? And boy, I found out. Hanging out with him every day. Listen, I enjoy my life. Oh, man, I love to get on a horse and spin it. I mean, especially when it's cool. Not in this hot, humid summer. Or get up early in the morning, be on a horse for a few hours, and just ride. I've gone hunting before by myself up at, up in the high Rocky Mountains. Oh yeah, and my gun wasn't even my scope was fogged up. I couldn't even use my gun, and I had bought an elk tag. But you know what? I went riding way up in there anyway, by myself, just praying and waiting on Lord. Everybody says you are you are crazy, David, and I said no, 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 no. There's when you buy that 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 tag to get an elk, they got a little three dollar fee that that helicopter will come and find your body and take you you know wherever they want your body to go. <laughs> I tell my I don't tell my daughter it's a lot of the things I do because she'd worry 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 so it's just you know but I'm enjoying my life and I'm being very bold about it but in the midst of it. I've incorporated prayer. That comes first. Before you're preaching, before you're pastoring, before you're evangelizing, before you're being a prophet, before you're prophesying, before you do all those things, prayer's got to come first. And that's where many people are failing. I know people go to a meeting, get drunk in the spirit, and then the rest of the week they're dude. 
Man, if I can get somebody praying consistently, man, they they ready instant in season and out of season anywhere that they are. And that's my goal is is to inspire you to be bold in all kind of situations. I walked into Rally's Burgers in the Walmart in Madison, Mississippi one day, and I'm under pressure, enemy putting stuff on me, junk coming against me from every direction. And I stand in line, there were four lines, and they were back to the door. There were a bunch of people in there. And all of a sudden, the girl pouring my co filling my coca cola her name is Destiny, and I said, hey, Destiny, and I, without thinking, I started prophesying to her. In round this hamburger joint. And tears just started running down her face. And, and did about three or four people, tears running down their face. And they're going, that was good. That was good. Right there at Riley's Burger Joint. And I walked out of there and I looked up and I said, I, I said, take that devil. You take that in Jesus' name. You shut up. And I just smiled real big went on about my business. Man, I've had a move of God in the, in the cookie section of Walmart. I've had a move of God in, in just about every area of Walmart. I, I, listen, I was praying at lunch today, walking through there with the grandkids, and I just I had my earbuds hanging over my ear, and and you know I don't walk through there just making a big scene or anything, but if you know most people walk around talking doubt and unbelief, I can walk around praying in tongues. I do it a lot, a, a tremendous a lot. <laughs> oh man, it's, you get edified when you do it. If you never have, just call me, leave me a message. I will meet with you. I met for, with people down here at the liberal coffee shop and they quite a few have received the baptism of the holy ghost and spoken unknown tongues right there at the coffee shop down here you know the one i'm talking about really nice in there <laughs> thank you lord jesus proverbs 28 1 says the, the the wicked flee when nobody's chasing them but the righteous those in right standing with god or bold as a lion. Who is in right standing with God? Here's how you get in right standing with God. You become a believer. And that puts you in right standing. You receive. It's what you believe. Not all your actions. Not doing these works. Too many, too many believers are wrapped up in works. The word says. What saith it? The word is near you. Even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. That if you will say Jesus is Lord. Say it right now. Jesus is Lord. And if you'll believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. Say that. Say, I choose to believe. Right now, you died for me, Jesus. And God, you raised Jesus from the dead. Say, I receive you, Lord. Well, I got to go so I can come right back. Say it again. Jesus loves me. I'll see you in just a minute. Back again. I was pulling out of a, wasn't a hamburger joint, but it was a chicken joint. And uh phone rang. And I had just met one of the employees, a buddy of mine named Zach. And his buddy was going to leave to start university the next morning. And he he said, David, and we had, we had we were driving off, me and my buddy, JB. And I got the car. I didn't even know this guy had my phone number, young guy. He said, David, would you come back and lead my friend into the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in unknown tongues? I said, sure, I will. I mean, just wheeled around. And so we get out there in the parking lot to be nice to everybody. You know, it was like nine past nine o'clock. It was quitting time. And they were, you know, closing up the chicken shop, chicken joint. And so I'm standing here, and we're kind of on the to the side of the parking lot and here's this guy fishing to go leave to go to school the next morning mississippi state university and uh i've led old miss people into this too a bunch of them <laughs> and and uh and so i'm standing there praying for him and jb standing behind him and the anointing, the presence of God fell in that parking lot. And, and I watched because I'm looking at the joint. And all, I mean, it's busiest one. It was the top one in the country. Uh, all the employees are filing out and walking behind us. And they can hear us praying in tongues. Well, am I going to stop just because somebody might be offended? No. Move on. Just move on. I, I'm, not, I'm not ashamed. 
This is in the Word. The Word is Jesus, and Jesus is the Word. It's part of it. I don't, I don't just take parts of the Bible. I take the whole counsel of God's Word. So, I'm praying for him and ministering to him. He starts speaking in unknown tongues. I look back to J.P. J.P.'s just standing behind him there, and he's so drunk in the spirit, he's about to fall out on the pavement. I'm thinking, well, he ain't any help. <laughs> he's already gone. And But here's all these employees walking by, and they hear this guy speaking in unknown tongues. And you say, well, you're just putting on a show. No, I'm acting in line with the Word of God and demonstrating God's power. Everybody tell me, since I was a baby, I've been in church, everybody told me you need to be like Jesus. But boy, I looked around, I didn't see too much of that going on. See, being like Jesus ain't what most folks think it is. When when the children tried to get around Jesus, they said, oh, no, 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 hold back. And Jesus said, hey, let, let the kids come around me. And that's me. I know I'm welcome. I'm just a great big kid. They'd tell you at the gym. You just act like a kid all the time. Well, I am a kid. I'm 69 and a half going on 17. <laughs> As quick as I can. <laughs> oh boy, running out of time. It's so easy. You just give the Lord room to work. Safest place to lay hands on somebody. On the shoulder. Female or male. And you don't ask them, can I pray for you? You just simply put your hand on the shoulder. You don't have to close your eyes because the Bible says watch and pray. You can look at them with your eyes open and say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Uh, a leader in one of the classes I take, about 60 or 70 of us in there, one day in the lobby, I knew she was going through heck, and I just walked up and sat my hand on her shoulder. I said, and I looked her in the eye and I said, in the name of Jesus. And she just started bawling. People are looking like, oh, God. And uh, I, I, they all think I'm crazy. But, buddy, when Holy Spirit gives me the nudge, you might as well step aside. I don't care who you are. I mean, I've been in the hot tub with an FBI agent, federal judge, district attorney, every kind of drug dealers, first round pick of the NFL, all kind of folks. I don't care. I'm not. In, I used to be intimidated. I'm not intimidated anymore. Because I have the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords living on the inside of me, and I get my direction for Him. Some, sometimes I miss it. A lot of times I have. So what? So what? But I got a clear heart and a clear conscience. So I want to encourage you. Say this after me. Say, Jesus is Lord. We got to go. This show goes by so fast. I get wound up. Sometimes I forgot my, forgot about my time, and I've preached like 20 minutes past the show and had to just cut it out. And say, Jesus loves me. It's high noon with David. He's gone and fallen in love with Jesus and bringing boldness to the body of Christ. Here's David.